Tuesday morning. Hey, everybody, what's going on? This is Jeremy coming at you once again with Red Tired Podcast, and I'm joined by the one and only uh, brand new homeowner, actually. Uh, the guy who just went and took his, took his ass to Vegas and got a house. Jacob Valdez. <laughs> I don't know how to introduce it I, like with, with, with this whole thing. Yeah, right. It's, I'm still like, dude, it's what? surreal. If I hadn't seen the pictures, mm-hmm. I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> You're not the only one, man. It was ever, we, my wife and I are in the same boat. We're like, is this surreal? Are they messing with us? And at the end, we're like, we're waiting for them to be like, oh, okay, thank you so much for the press. Okay, well, here you go. Here's some brochures and here's some coupons. Have a good day. Yeah, it's amazing. You, uh, you, you were literally on stage. Like, I mean, you could have reached out and punched old George straight right in the nose if you wanted to. Dude, he's like almost my height. Well, everybody's almost your height. You're like, what, 5'7"? Mm-hmm. But I thought he'd be like a six-foot guy. Not all cowboys are tall. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the trip. Well, uh, we ate dinner. As soon as we landed, we had a few hours to ourselves. I was trying to find time to hang out with another veteran brother that lives there. His name is Raymond Labayog. Anyways, I was trying to find time to hang out. It just couldn't work out because he was working. He still works for the post office there in Las Vegas, so... It just couldn't quite really work out. So did you do anything cool in Vegas? Did you go put like a dollar on double zero on craps? Or No, but you're going to love this. So people go to Vegas to lose money. You know, they go gambling and all this stuff. So my wife and I were taking a tour around MGM. This is a smart way to do Vegas, to earn an easy $70. And this is how we, I mean, my wife and I earn $70 each. So we actually walked away with $140 plus. So this guy was giving out tickets at the TV, uh, TV city area. And they're like, Hey, we want you to go watch the show. You get $20 at the end. If you qualify and how you answer your questions are like, all right. So we answered those questions and they said, all right, you qualify for the $20. And it was, we watched an episode of the neighborhood, which is an okay show. It's not that great. You know, when we first saw it, but cause it was no content. We just watched a random episode and we're kind of like the focus group for it. And, uh, so, that being said, we spent about 45 minutes in there. We got $20. So when we walked out, the lady was like, oh, we really appreciate some of your feedback. And we were like one of the few that actually knew what we're talking about. And you know how my wife gets too. She gets really into it and how she thinks how what they're portraying and stuff like that, what direction they're trying to go with the show. So they enjoyed us too. And they offered us another 50 additional dollars to come back a few hours later to do a full blown focus group where Hollywood producers will watch us via camera webcam and kind of see our reactions. And they'll ask us more in depth questions about the show. And we're like, we're like, uh, yeah, we'll go, we'll do it. So we went, ate lunch, came back, did that. We got another $50 cash and we both walked out with $70 each. Hmm. So a free $70 to tell Hollywood executives and Hollywood directors and those types that uh, the kind of crap that they're putting out is really annoying. Yeah, the show was all right, but yeah. I kind of told them, like, you know, my ideas and what kind of direction and blah, blah. But Any yeah. kind of uh, political injection or anything like that? Nope. No, nope. nope. there was nothing about, you know, indoctrinating your kids or anything like that in the TV show? Nope. So they showed like, you probably one of the more tame videos or one of the more tame episodes and said, okay, we need. Yeah. It was kind of like, a, it was kind of, yeah. It, it kind of reminded me of last man standing, to be honest. Oh, last man standing is an outstanding show. You know, you can actually, <laughs> you can actually learn something. It's almost like uh, if the Cosby's was still relevant. <laughs> Minus all the drugs and, you know, rape and stuff. Yeah, it's a show with Cedric the Entertainer, but uh, um, good show. Um, I gave him honest feedback. Um, I didn't love it and I didn't hate it, but this is what you need to work on. But check this out, Jeremy. I earned seventy dollars in two hours taken from my time instead of using those two hours to gamble probably seventy dollars away. So what you're saying? So is there's a way to earn some to money Vegas. in Vegas. Yeah, fly to Vegas, go get some little side hustles, little side gigs, do some polls, maybe knock over a hooker or two. <laughs> did you? No, that? but no, yeah, um, yeah, no, I did. I'm sorry. So, Anyways, so anyway, we, we, so we thought it was. I made it to. So the moral of the story here is, ladies and gentlemen, Jacob made it made it to Vegas to go get a house, and he ended up doing the survey for Hollywood. 
freaking sellout. <laughs> no, we had some spare time. Anyways, we ate dinner and they actually, uh, Wells Fargo executives were there and they gave us kind of like a rundown ceremony there at the restaurant to get like basically the photo op of the key. Oh, they bought you dinner. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, that's different. You just said, well, we ate mm-hmm. dinner. Like, well, oh. that's good that you've got your priorities set. You know, most people do like to eat. No, they, they took us out. They wanted to know, you know, us on a personal level, which was awesome. We, we had a really great time. They gave us the key and um, we walked down towards the T-Mobile arena and to get ready to go meet good old George Strait. And dude, we're like two rows behind the front row. And anyone on the ground level that could afford the tickets that are 10 rows and deep, the first 10 rows, you are able to keep the chair of the concert and take it home with you. Anybody ever tell you you're a fantastic storyteller? Ladies and gentlemen, keep an eye out for Jacob's new book. I went to Vegas. It's going to be available very soon. <laughs> no, on I'm not Amazon. done yet. Com. You didn't let me finish. You didn't let me finish. So anyways. The uh, awkward pause and the awkward uh, we, silence. I'm trying to think because, dude, everything was still for real. It, when we woke up that next morning here back at home, it still felt like a dream. Uh, but we got to meet his wife. We got to uh, – we couldn't really meet George because, you know, he was getting ready for the concert. But when we went up on stage, we shook hands. And uh, they pretty much told a brief story, of our story, not just my story and what I did for my service, but also what I really appreciated was everything that my wife has done too. And uh, it was really great in front of 23,000 people. Uh, and that's when they gave us another key, which this time it was metal. And uh, it was a huge, good size key. And uh, it was great. And, and we didn't know this until we were on stage. But George Strait is also setting us more additional things that from his uh, sponsors as well. Like he's giving us cowboy boots, jackets, all kinds of all this kinds of stuff that we're just so grateful for eBay. Here we go. And, tell. uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, we're just, we're extremely grateful. And George Stray, his wife, they, you know, so far from what I understood from his wife, George Stray from his personal income to help veterans is $13 million since he's been in the industry. That's how much he's given so far to help out veterans and their families. That's outstanding. I'd love to be able to give out $13 million of my own personal income. That would be, um, of course, I have to have $13 million. So I'll get there one day. Just just hold your horses. <laughs> but no, and his wife, you know, she was just saying, you know, George, if he could do more, he said, she said is that, you know, he could, you know, he would, you know, when it comes to thanking everyone for his service and he continuously tries to find ways to give out, you know, do free concerts for veterans and so on and so forth. And so, man, uh, it's so, I'm so grateful that there's people like George Strait that they have the resources to help veterans and they, they do so selflessly, you know, without pretty much anything back in return. Yeah. It is pretty cool to see guys who Gary Sinise is another one that, uh, that, he does a ton Mm -hmm. of stuff for veterans and and honestly i don't know that um i don't know that he really gets nearly as much credit or recognition as he deserves for all the stuff that he does do for veterans because ever since playing lieutenant dan he's kind of uh he's kind of been like uh, the go-to celebrity that's gonna make sure that veterans get what they need and he's gonna i mean he's got a foundation and everything it's huge and um and anytime there's there's celebrities that uh, that they use their platform for good things like this, I think they don't get enough recognition. And a large part of the problem is, you know, the media has this this well, they've got an agenda. Let's let's face facts because emotion sells things, right? And and especially when you get anger, anger sells. And so they always have kind of mm-hmm. some kind of a I don't know like an attention grabbing, anger driven click click me now you got to read this story you're not going to believe it and then you actually read the story and it's really just a bunch of fluff so Mm -hmm. i don't think that those guys get enough credit for the stuff that they do for any community the veteran community or whatever you know whatever community it is that you know might be downtrodden or whatever 
Um, and I'm certainly not saying that veterans mm -hmm. themselves are downtrodden because that nothing could be further from the truth. Most of the time we come out with a can do attitude and we just have to, you know, get out of the way of uh, wartime, wartime injuries or uh, things that, uh, that come up, that come along that affect our ability to be able to compete in the marketplace. But man, when you got a veteran that comes out, and they've got that attitude. They've got the leadership abilities and skills that, that I mean, they're finely tuned machines. And all they have to do, well, most of mm -hmm. us, all we have to do is just get out of our own damn way when it comes to all of the uh, civilian sector rules and regulations and all this unspoken crap. Well, you know, another thing that, caught, that really grabbed my attention was that um, the kind of crowd that George Strait brings, you know, um, I, they were literally chanting USA when my wife and I were getting off the stage. Yeah. A bunch of racist white rednecks, Which was right? Great to hear that, that level, uh, that level of patriotism that I've haven't heard in a long time since almost close to the beginning of the war. Unfortunately, that's really what really brought us together was nine 11. And to be honest, we lived 10, we not lived, but we stayed 10 minutes away from the actual arena at the MGM grand. It was literally like a 10 to 15 minute walk. It took us an hour and a half to get back to our hotel room. And it wasn't just because of the crowd. It was because everyone, I felt like a celebrity. Everyone was saying, thank you for your service, shaking my hand. They wanted to talk to my wife and I, and they wanted to know more about our story. And um, yeah, it took us a long time to get to our room, but it, it really was a great feeling of not just for myself, but I was like, man, this level of patriot, I have not felt this way of, when it came to patriotism in a long time like because you know the media like you said earlier they that's all you hear is the anti-patriotism stuff and it's just it's sad and when and when you actually see a thing that's totally opposite i was just like oh my god this is so great i didn't you know because for a while jeremy and you have to feel it too you sometimes you're like as a veteran that served a few tours in combat for the you know the, the defense of our country you kind of be like you know, you kind of feel like unappreciated sometimes because, you know, they don't talk about it really, you know, and there's some people that they don't know your story, they're not going to tell you anything or unless you wear a hat or whatever, but um, you really don't. And even then, you know, a lot of people are really like, they don't go up to you or thank you for your service really no more because it's kind of dying down because the media floods it with, you know, to floods it with talking down about our commander in chief, you know, which is our president of the United States. And, that's sad because they, they represent, they think that every, everyone that is in support of Trump and has troops and everyone always, you know, uh, thinks that troops are pro-Trump and blah, 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 you know, and, and most likely that's kind of true. Uh, you know, there are left-leaning soldiers that I've served with and, but still, you know, I think no matter what you think they lean right or left, you, you should appreciate their service for what they're doing. So you have the right to be angry. <laughs> well, okay. So a couple of things. One, um, I, I don't really tell a whole lot of people that I'm a veteran, but every once in a while, I, like I wear the hat out, right? You know, the hat that's behind me, mm -hmm. the, the one that's got the infidel on it, whatever. I'll wear that out from mm -hmm. time to time whenever, you know, having a bad hair day or something like that. Plus it's a kick-ass hat. <laughs> bad hair day. What hair? Uh, the back. Um, so, <laughs> sometimes I'll wear the hat out. Right. And, and I just don't think about it and people will still come up to me and say, thank you for your service and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and when they do, you know, it's a humbling experience and I'll just say, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And that's the most humble way I know how to reply because it, for years it was an awkward thing, but uh, not getting into that part too much. One of the things that, um, that I try to do is I try to maintain this, uh, this level of, I don't, I kind of want to say secrecy. Like I don't really want to tell my story too much because I kind of get tired of telling it over and over and over again. But from time to time I'll meet people and I'll start, you know, kind of opening up a little bit and maybe trust a little bit and let you know, okay, well, here's how I got to where I am. Here's, here's why I'm in the position I'm in. Here's, you know, and, and, and so I'll tell the story from time to time, but um, my God to, walk away from like a George Strait concert after being told my story, my story being shouted out to 23,000 people, dude, I would have probably worn a freaking paper bag over my head just to get back to the hotel. Cause I would have been like, I can't tell this story over and over and over and over and over again. It's going to get yeah. way <laughs> too much, way too fast. But mm -hmm. I have to ask you a question. 
Now, I know they mm-hmm. didn't let you say anything while you were on stage, which is a damn shame. It's a damn crime is what it should be. And you weren't allowed to wear <laughs> any specific types of shirts that I might have suggested, but you did get to no, interact to with a lot of people. Shirt. Yeah, which is, yeah, whatever, you know, hey, advertise for us, blah, blah, blah. I actually made a suggestion to you to advertise for Red Tired Podcast should you get the opportunity to do so. And mm-hmm. none of those opportunities arose. So I have to assume that when you had conversations with these people and they were asking, well, what are you doing now? You had to have said, I run a podcast, check it out. Yep, exactly. And out of that, I actually have a prospect to come here to do an interview, which is the guy who's in charge of the actual foundation itself, which I want to take this opportunity to thank the Military Warriors Support Foundation because they're the ones that put it together. They're the ones that bless my family with a home. And, and, and we just found out yesterday that the home comes with brand new appliances too with everything. And so I was telling Alex, well, it's I was a new happy home, to have a home. It? <laughs> it's a new home, yeah. right? Yeah. Brand, but we didn't, we weren't new, right? expecting like the fridge. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So most new homes typically come with new appliances, typically matching. It's, it's not, it's not, mm-hmm. you know, a hundred percent across the board, but this is something you'll pick up more and more as you get into real estate. There should be at least some amenities They go along with the home. And in most Mm -hmm. cases, most cases, not all, most of those amenities actually do stay because they match. And nobody wants to, you know, it's an appeal thing that builders do. They say, well, we're just going to go ahead and give all the appliances, work it in, catch some profit off of it in the end. But, you know, the more you know, there you go. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. So I would like to thank uh, Leroy Cisco for everything that he's done. Uh, And, uh, I hope he continues to do war with the, we were the 79th home they awarded to, uh, to, to families. And, uh, again, I am just so blessed. I I'm speechless still. Now remind me, uh, what was the criteria for this, uh, this home, the award you had to be a purple heart recipient. Uh, yes, correct? there's actually, there's three primary ones. One is you must be a combat wounded veteran from any American military conflict to be, uh, to, you can even be unmarried uh, or married spouse of a veteran who was KIA too as well. Um, and the main thing is the Purple Heart recipients are given priority though. Um, number two is it must be honorably separated, retired from the military or within 90 days of discharge. So you have to, to be outside. You can't be active or anything like that. And number three, you must intend uh to use the home as your primary residence priority will be given to applicants who do not currently have a mortgage. Okay. So there it is. If you, uh, if you've been injured in combat and you qualify with an honorable discharge, of course, or medical would probably qualify as well. And you don't have a mortgage. Check these guys out. What's their website? Uh, Militarywarriors.org. There you go. Militarywarriors.org. And we're going to work on trying to get a representative or the representative from militarywarriors.org onto the podcast and uh, hopefully get them a little bit more exposure for all the cool things that they're doing for our wounded veterans. Um, So Jacob and other news, something a little less enlightening and a little less joyful, which is, this is probably how we should have let in with the podcast rather than talking about the good stuff first. But we gotta, I got to talk about some really stupid, stupid stuff. And, uh, of course, as, as per usual with, uh, with this, I'll have all the articles linked down in the description below. You're welcome, Mike. Greta Thunberg has been named Times 2019 Person of the Year. Greta Thunberg, the Swedish teenage environmental activist, is Time Magazine's 2019 Person of the Year, the publication announced on Wednesday. That would be today. Thank you. The 16-year-old Thunberg has gained worldwide exposure for raising awareness of the climate change and now the younger individual to ever be the youngest individual to ever be named Times Person of the Year. She became a sensation last summer by sailing across the Atlantic from England, white privilege, to New York, And speaking in the United Nations since then, Thunberg has traveled around the world advocating for climate change awareness and action. When she should be in school, by the way, I'm going to add. 
the uh, Thunberg and President Trump, who was named president, what? Thun Thunberg and President Trump, who was named person of the year in 2016, were among the finalists among the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, uh, Democrat of California, Women's World Cup champion Megan Rape Rapinoe, uh, and the anonymous whistleblower who helped ignite the ongoing impeachment inquiry. Still anonymous, which is pathetic. Thunberg began a global movement by skipping school starting in August 2018. She spent her day camped out in front of the Swedish parliament holding a sign painted in black letters on a white background that read, I can't read this crap because, oh, okay, translate, school strike for climate, time wrote. In the 16 months since, she has addressed heads of the state in the UN, met with the Pope, the Pope, whatever, sparred with the President of the United States and inspired 4 million people to join the global climate strike September 20th, 2019 in what was the largest climate demonstration in human history. Time noted that Thunberg is not a leader of any political party or advocacy group, right, and has no access to traditional levers of influence, adding that she is an ordinary teenage girl who, in summoning the courage to speak truth to power, became the icon of a generation. Wow. Hmm. Became the icon of a generation. Um, I can think of other icons of generations. Lots of other icons of generations. In fact, Time Magazine has listed some very interesting people, Jacob, as icons of their generation. Let's review some of the icons, shall we? Sit yeah. back. Have a I seat. heard in history they picked some really great people. Oh, yeah. Here. You're going to love this. Adolf Hitler, among the most infamous and reviled leaders in the world history, was named Time Person of the Year in 1938. Hitler became the 19, in 1938 the greatest threatening force that the democratic, freedom-loving world faces today, the magazine said, as it explained its choice. The Nazi leader's aggression in Europe in the late 1930s shocked the region and wider world, which was still weary from World War I. Hmm, Hitler, Time's Person of the Year. I'm starting to think that maybe Time Person, Time Magazine... Man of the Year Award, Person of the Year Award, uh, probably doesn't have such a positive spin. Maybe I'm being crazy here. So let's let's look at who else. Oh, Joseph Stalin. Joseph Stalin was chosen as Times Person of the Year in 1939 and 1942. Hmm. The Soviet leader is often pointed to as one of the most ruthless authoritarians in history. Uh, Stalin was influential and a figure between his, uh, between his brutal, bloody rise to power in Russia as well as his central role in defeating the Nazis during World War II. Yes, he had a part in defeating the Nazis. That is true, but they were also partnered. So, tit for tat. The year 1942 was a year of blood and strength, Time said of Stalin in early 1943. The man whose name means steel in Russian whose few words of English include the American expression tough guy, was the man of 1942. Only Joseph Stalin fully knew how close Russia stood to defeat in 1942, and only Joseph Stalin fully knew how he brought Russia through. So we're going to ignore all of the bad stuff that Russia did with Stalin and whatnot and proclaim him a hero because of what happened in 42 when the Nazis turned on him. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Another person who was Time Magazine's Person of the Year, Nikita Khrushchev. Why is that important? Well, let's talk about it. Nikita Khrushchev became the leader of the Soviet Union when Stalin's death in 1953 and was named Times Person of the Year in 1957. He led the Soviets during a crucial part of the Cold War, including amid the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. The U.S. and the Soviets had been allies during World War II, but they quickly became adversaries as the globe's most powerful countries in the wake of the conflict. That's worded very, very wrong. In 1957, the U.S. went into panic after the Soviets launched the Sputnik satellites, marking the beginning of the space age and the space race between the United States and the USSR. As Time explained its choice in Khrushchev for Person of the Year in 1958, it wrote, quote, the, symbol of 1957's were, uh, the symbols of 1957 were two pale, clear streaks of light that slashed across the world's night skies with the Sputnik. 
Russia took Russia took men into the new era of space, and with its advanced with its advances in the art of missilery, posed the U.S. with the dramatic military threat it had ever faced. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I could kind of see their pick on that one, but Khrushchev was no saint. Well, let's go on, because there's more. How about uh, former U.S. President Richard Nixon, who was named Times Person of the Year in 1970 and 1971? Nixon, undoubtedly the most controversial president in U.S. history at the time due to the Watergate scandal, which led to his resignation in 1974 as he faced the prospect of impeachment. The cover-up and chaotic aftermath overshadowed by any good he may have done as president. When Time picked him as the person of the year for 1971, it discussed Nixon's famous visit to the communist China and effort to pull the U.S. out of Vietnam. But in what was perhaps an unintentionally foreshadowing description, Time also referred to Nixon as, quote, disconcertingly unpredictable. Oh, man. So, hmm. I wonder if they ever picked anybody good. So how about this uh, Ayatollah Khomeini? I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I don't care if I'm pronouncing it wrong or not. Uh, Ayatollah Khomeini was Times Person of the Year in 1979, one of the most tumultuous years in the 20th century. Khomeini was the central figure of the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran, which saw a pro-Western government ousted and involved Iran hostage crisis at the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. The politically active, the politically active Shiite cleric had lived in exile for many years before a public uprising led to the Shah of Iran the U.S.-backed monarch to flee early in 1979. Khomeini returned shortly thereafter and spearheaded the establishment of the theocratic government based on Islamic law. He referred to the U.S. as the great Satan and dramatically altered the relationship between two countries to this day. I think we kind of see the point I'm trying to make. Time Magazine does not have a track record for picking amazing people. Even their runner-ups are horrible. It's kind of hard to argue that as well. Yeah, um, you know, Vladimir Putin was 2007 Man of the Year, or Person of the Year, sorry. Yeah, well, and, and, and call me crazy, but aren't a bunch of these left-wing nut jobs kind of like looking at Putin as if he's a bad person and saying, oh, well, uh, Trump colluded with Putin, and Trump is working with Putin because they talk on the, on the world leader stage, and uh, Putin bad. Mm-hmm. I think 2003 was the best year. Oh, really? It was that's, 2003. Yeah, that's when they picked the American soldier. Oh, you mean they actually did something? Oh, wait a minute. Now we must be evil too because we're we are the time person of the year. God, <laughs> we're just. <laughs> <laughs> we must be we must be horrible horrible people because we met. So, all of this in essence to say, Greta Thunberg, congratulations. You've done nothing to actually benefit society whatsoever, but by God, you're going to be on the cover of a magazine. Yep. And you're only 16 years old. Imagine all the implications. This girl's going to retire rich. She is because people are going to pay her for endorsements. Does she even go to school? No, she's only 16. She, she hadn't even, I don't even think she's graduated yet. They're going to give her an honorary diploma? Well, I mean. You don't need an education anymore. Education. Here's a paper that says you finished it. What is that? Congratulations. Here's an honorary doctorate from Yale. And Yale just became crap. That's probably not the way that it's actually going to go down. But anyway, so it, it, it does kind of beg the question, like, what's really going on in Sweden that these kids – it is Swedish, right? She's Swedish. Did I miss something there? No. Okay, I didn't miss anything. So she's Swedish. So it begs the question, what are these Swedish kids doing if they're not in school? Now – Anybody who's ever listened to me, and I got it because I got to stay this part of it because I'm saying this kid's not in school, but anybody who's ever listened to me knows that I don't believe that school is the end all be all that's going to make for your deciding future. In fact, I've chastised a lot, a lot of teachers and a lot of public school um, people in general. I mean, anybody who's employed by the public school that, that shoves this nonsense down our kids' throats is like, if you don't get good grades, you won't have a good job and blah, 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 and all that crap. But at the same time, I'm wondering what in the world is going on in Sweden where this girl can just cut class and go sailing around the world and just like, uh, uh, you know, and while I'm on it, I'm going to go ahead and talk to the UN. I'm going to go ahead and let them know. You know what really gets me upset is that we're, they were really considering her to be the Nobel Peace Prize runner-up for this year as well. I, that's, that's just retarded. That's stupid. That's just plain stupid. 
There's, mm -hmm. she's done nothing to deliver peace. That's what the Nobel Peace Prize was all about, was delivering peace. Matter of fact, they should mm -hmm. rescind Obama's Nobel Peace Prize, the bomber in chief, because that guy was nailing people left and right. So here's another little fun fact for you, Jacob. This whole global warming, uh, this whole uh, uh, climate change thing, like the science, everybody's like, well, the scientific consensus, it's settled. No, it's not. Speak to any actual climatologist. Go ahead, do some research, read a book. I know that would be hard for some people. Reading is hard, I get it, but this is not new, okay? In fact, if you, uh, if you were on Facebook a couple of days ago, I actually shared some old articles from the Associated Press. Do you remember seeing that at all? Nah, you were too busy getting a house. Uh, the Associated Press said this, the United Nations predicts disaster if global warming is not checked. A senior UN environmental official says that the entire nation could be wiped off the face of the earth by rising sea levels if the global warming trend is not reversed by the year 2000. Oh, wait a minute. 2000? Hmm, that was 20 years ago. Wait, wasn't it? Oh, that, wait, this, this story was published on June 29th of 1989. Oh, gosh. I wonder. They said 10 years right here. The, the world's going to end in 10 years because of rising sea levels, Jacob. And this was 30 years ago. We're still here. I'm still here. Something's wrong. <laughs> the UN couldn't possibly be wrong. My gosh. It's almost as if entire nations that could have been wiped off the face of the earth weren't. It's almost like there's a hidden agenda. Oh, my God. Do you think they're trying to do this to increase our taxes? Oh, my God. Or shift our money to products that supposedly can save us, too, which they own the companies that create those products. Which is, you know, look, I'm all for the free market actually solving problems. I'm not advocating that we just keep dumping CO2 into the, into the air and saying, meh, it's okay. Because it's not okay. You know, we, we do need to take care of what we've got. But I'm just not buying this whole scientific consensus garbage. Everybody cites this 99% of scientific scientists agree. I don't want to hear from a scientist. I want to hear from a climatologist. I want to hear from somebody who actually studies the climate, who actually has hard physical data, not just a general scientist. So, so what's, your, what's your degree in there, uh, Mr. Scientist? Well, actually, uh, I'm an astrophysicist. Oh, so you don't study the climate? Well, no, no, but I can read the papers. Well, then shut up. How about some real hard evidence for this? That too much to ask? Nah, that's crazy. So, because the media is the media, we got we to gotta cite something else here. You're going to love this. CNN, they've got kind of a, uh, a different approach to this whole Greta Thunberg thing. Uh, everybody else announced the story. So, like, the, the story that I read earlier, that was, uh, that was called, uh, that was Fox News. It said Greta Thunberg named Times 2019 Person of the Year, right? Well, how does CNN label yep. it? CNN says, why time-picking Greta Thunberg will drive Donald Trump crazy. What? What does that, what, what, what does that have to do with anything? Just tell the story. CNN says, on Wednesday morning, Time Magazine announced that the team climate activist Greta Thunberg was in was its person of the year. Uh, she has succeeded in creating a global attitudinal, attitudinal shift, attitudinal, I didn't write that. I'm, I'm sure that's a word. It sounds ridiculous. Who edits this crap? She has succeeded in creating an, uh, a global attitudinal shift, transforming millions of vague middle-of-the-night anxieties into worldwide movement calling for urgent change. She has offered a moral clarion call to those who are willing to act and hurled shame on, the, on those who are not. Wait a minute. Isn't CNN opposed to shaming? Don't they have kind of an agenda where you're like, you're not supposed to like fat shame or body shame or I, I, oh, I get, but, but no, they get over. mad at it when we say it. They're climate shaming me. 
<laughs> yeah, see how stupid that sounds? Toonberg was chosen amongst a group that included Hong Kong protesters. Now, see, I would have actually uh, appreciated the Hong Kong protesters making Times Person of the Year. Uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who, why, whatever, I, I'll never understand how she could make it, and President Donald Trump. And it's the last name on the list who will be most aggrieved, not only because he was not chosen, but also because Toonberg, well, was. That's a direct quote from the story. Start here. Trump has long had an obsession with Times Person of the Year, dating back long before he was president. Quote, I knew last year that Time Magazine lost all credibility when they didn't include me in their top 100, Trump tweeted in 2012. Three years later, as a candidate for president, Trump reacted this way when Time chose German Prime Minister Angela Merkel as its person of the year. I told you a Time magazine would never pick me as a person of the year, despite being the big favorite. They picked the person who is ruining Germany, and he's correct. When Time picked Trump as its person of the year the following year, he took note. Thank you to Time magazine and Financial Times for naming me person of the year. A great honor, he tweeted. Then in 2017, Trump tweeted this. Time Magazine called to say that I was probably going to be named Man Person of the Year like last year, but I would have to agree to an interview and a major photo shoot. And I said, probably is no good. And I took a pass. Thanks anyway. Side note, that's not how Time picked its Person of the Year. Not at all. Well, I'm not seeing any agenda here in CNN whatsoever. So Trump cares a lot about who Time picks. Why? because the vast majority of his conceptions of success, fame, and power were established in the 1980s. Being on the cover of a magazine, particularly one like Time, was a sign that you've made it, and Trump likes visible signs that he's a big deal. So, let's just take all of that into consideration, put the same context behind Hitler, Stalin, all those other jackasses that we just spent time talking about earlier, who is also Time's Person of the Year, and apply CNN's logic to it where they say right here, it was a sign that you'd made it. Made what? Made it like success? Made it like you're a big deal? So if that's correct, then CNN is looking at Time Magazine's Person of the Year as if it's like this great, amazing achievement. But the context that we're reading here, it kind of suggests otherwise that it's not such a great achievement. In fact, it's kind of counterculture to what is real success. Real success doesn't look like, oh, I don't know, an Adolf Hitler or a Joseph Stalin. Yes, they were successful in what they endeavored to do. But their ethics and their morality had to be held in question. And that begs the question, why then is Time Magazine considering them for man of the year, woman of the year, person of the year, any of the year, any of the, why, why are we giving those titles away to people who have questionable objective morality? I guess it's a, it's a good question. I actually, I don't know what else to say. Like maybe ego. But the ego of who? The ego of the editor at Time? That's are they? Man, I didn't thought about that. Yeah. Who, whose ego do you really satisfy by putting people on, on the cover in the first place who have that questionable morality? You know, Stalin killed millions and millions of people. Hitler killed six million Jews. We have evidence of this. We know this for a fact. And they were still considered person of the year, quarter, man of the year, whatever, according to Time Magazine. So, Let's go back and, and consider this, this, that point. Consider all of this, that if time is putting people on the cover of their magazine, are they, are they objectively glorifying these people? If so, then they're questionable, to say the least, when they glorify people who do have such objective negative morality issues such as the Hitlers and the Stalins. But then at the mm -hmm. same time, you have to turn around and justify putting a 16 year old kid who has Asperger's syndrome on the cover because she spoke to the UN in a threatening tone at one point. You know what? I can talk to the UN in a threatening tone. I certainly, I certainly don't want to be on the cover of time magazine. That's the last place I want my ugly muck. You know why? 
because it doesn't look good on me. It looks bad on me. To the average American, you're looking at Time Magazine and you're going, oh, person of the year, they must be a really good person. To me, it's like, no, if, it, if the media is glorifying a person, then I have to, I have to take a deeper look at that person and do a, a really deep analysis on their morality. What are your thoughts? You brought up a good point. Cause like, especially with like, why do they start doing this? I would like to know, like really dive into that. Cause kind of curious, like, are you doing it for, to recognize that individual? Or are you doing it to eagle yourself as the person who owns the magazine or as the editor? Man, I, I, I really don't know. Like, what do we benefit as a society for this? Nothing. You don't, be, you don't benefit at all. In, in fact, yeah. I, I would almost push to think that perhaps the, uh, the big reason that they would put somebody like a Greta Thunberg on the cover of the magazine has nothing to do at all with Greta Thunberg because she's nothing more than a pawn in this grand scheme of chess where they're actually pushing for another excise form of taxation. And in order to justify the taxation that they're, they're looking to impose, they have to let everybody know like, Hey, climate change is a problem. Like we need to do something about that. And so let's funnel a bunch of money towards something right now. Here's where this whole thing gets sketchy. The people who are doing the work on this, this climate subjects, the climate topics, the climate change, all the, you know, all that crap, right? We got all these scientists that are, they're government funded, to do the research on whether or not the climate is actually changing. Okay. You tracking with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. You've been in the government for more than 30 minutes. You understand there's a big problem that we all face where, what about next year's budget? Oh my God, we, we can't, we, we, we have to justify a bigger budget. Like what do we got to do? Okay. So like, remember when we were in the army, this is a very, very small example comparatively, but when you and I were out in the field, Think back to basic training, right? We go out to the field and the drill sergeants only give you a certain amount of food, right? And then the rest of it, mm -hmm. they throw it into the wood line. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're wasting a bunch of food and everybody who's like all these new trainees, they're like, but we're hungry. Like what, why are we throwing away all this food? And what does the drill sergeant tell you? The drill sergeant says, well, we have to make sure that we have the budget for it next year. So it, it, we use it or we lose it. And that's the way that the government works. If you don't use it, you lose it. It's just like a muscle. Okay. So by taking that into understanding, we got to go, okay, well, if I don't use it, then I lose it. Well then on a grander scale, I have to also understand that these scientists that are, they're contracted by the government. If they don't, if they don't use their funding on an annual basis, then they lose it, which means that they lose their job, which means that they don't have a nine to five. They don't have a source of income. So what's the motivation then? The motivation therein lies that they must find a way to justify staying employed, even if it's a scientific consensus that the earth is going to blow up in 10 freaking years. Even if it's a lie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but the thing is, is why they're not getting recognized, though. The people that actually do the real work. Well, because. You don't want to draw too much attention to the people that are actually carrying out your, your, your objective. Okay. For example, your house, the, the new house that you just got, right? Who are we trying when, when you're awarded that thing, like who are we drawing attention to? Yeah. I'm gonna, Us, yeah. You, mm -hmm. you're the person that got the attention because you're the person that received the purple heart. It's never the goal of a true leader or it shouldn't be, it should never be the goal of a true leader to, to try to glorify himself through the achievements of whatever it is that he's endeavoring in. So in other words, if uh, the guy who's running the organization that gave you the mortgage-free house said, and you know, I'd really like to thank myself for doing all the work. So uh, could we give me a round of applause? Would you, mm -hmm. uh, you would never want to carry that kind of a, that kind of an arrogant move out would you no i don't think so, any true leader would do that so therefore they need a pawn 
And, and not to be insulting to you, but you're the example here. So in this example, you became the pawn and you got the credit for all of the work that they were doing, right? And it draws attention to their organization. The more attention that that organization gets, the more donations the organization gets, the more the organization, the organization is able to thrive. And they can keep doing what they're doing and keep existing because they drew attention using somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it's not, now I'm not trying, again, not no, trying to degrade what they did to you. Good thing. Yes, they're doing a great thing for you. And I'm not mm -hmm. trying to draw attention to the fact that you're a pawn because that's not my point. But my point, not you specifically, but in this case, Greta Thunberg is you. She is the pawn in this whole thing. So she gets all this credit. And people who are none the wiser, who can't put two and two together or can't even put a, a round peg in a square hole are kind of looking at this whole thing like, well, thank God we've got this 16-year-old with Asperger's syndrome to stand up and tell the UN what to do because otherwise the earth is going to blow up. <laughs> It blows my mind that people correlate these kinds of thoughts together and yet they're able to wake up in the morning and tie their own shoes. Mm -hmm. So all that being said, I've been a windbag today. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I understand what you're doing because you're, um, you know what? No, I'm not going to say that because that's just, yeah, no, never mind. Because I'm just going to be an ass. I'm just, I mean, you can be an ass all you want to. Make the jokes. I've been, dude, I've been knocking not on Not towards you. you, no, no, but yeah. I, the thing is, is I'm passionate about truth. I'm passionate about honesty. And if you got to be 100% truthful and 100% honest in your life with everything that you do, that, first of all, that's what creates true success. I don't care if your bankroll is a million dollars, $10 million, or $10. If you're honest in life, all of the other stuff follows along with it. It's people mm -hmm. who, who constantly cheat or lie or steal or what have you. Those are the people that are always affected the most because – Call it, you, know, you can call it whatever you want to. I believe in, yeah, I'm just going to use the, the term that everybody understands is karma. Karma is a real thing. And what goes around does come around. Right? And my name is Earl. Yeah, my, my name is Earl. And that's a great, that's a great TV show, by the way. But <laughs> karma is a real thing. What you, the Bible says, what you, what you reap, you're, you know, you're going to sow things, you're going to reap them. And what, what you sow, you will reap, right? Mm -hmm. You'll reap what you sow. I don't know, I'm taking it out of, I'm getting words jumbled. I'm too, I'm too worked up over this whole thing. But it's the truth. Everything, everything that you do in society, in culture, in life, the way that you talk to people, treat people, it always, always comes back. Always. And in this, this scenario right here, this is what I'm so passionate about the truth. I think it's extremely important that if you're being totally honest with yourself, you have to recognize to some degree that this girl is being used. And she's, oh, yeah. she's not smart enough or experienced enough in life to even understand it. And it's disgusting that the United Nations of all places is even – even sat there and allowed a 16-year-old child because that's what she is. She's a child. That is disabled. A disabled, Asperger's diagnosed child to talk on the world scale and allow themselves to be chastised. And that tells me a whole bunch about the UN, the fact that they would actually allow a child to sit there and chastise them and then be like, well, you know what? I think this child is right. This kid's got a point. What, 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 where, where's the ethical high ground here? Mm -hmm. they, they don't even let scientists up there that know what they're doing sometimes to talk. No, because they know the truth. It, it, the truth is ugly. It is. Being honest, sometimes it'll lose you friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've lost friends for being honest. I don't care because if they don't want the truth, I don't want them in my life, anyways. Yeah. But, when you come out and you tell the truth and you let people know, like, no, I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you how I see it. I'm going to tell you, I'm pre I'll present facts. I'll present logic. I'll remove emotion, but I'm not going to lie to you. 
One of the, when you have people like that in your life, those are the most valuable people in the world. You want to keep those people the closest to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your friends close, your enemies closer. I've heard that a million times. I don't, I don't want to keep my enemies closer. I want to keep them at an arm's length. Stay mm-hmm. away. I want honesty. I want truth. I want integrity. And unfortunately, we're sitting in a, in a world where in 2019, we don't have honesty, truth, integrity. We don't have morality anymore, right? You, you've done these things like you've taken all the morality out of, out of places like the school, right? Where you used to, you, used to be you, you could pray in school. You used to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, well, that offends me. I'm offended. Well, get over yourself for being offended because, you know, somebody might like to read the Bible or somebody might like to read the Quran. Somebody might like to read, uh, you know, some kind of, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they read. It's their life. They get to live it however they see fit. And you, whether you're offended or not, get over it. Mm -hmm. A true level of integrity would say, well, you know, I might not agree with what somebody says or what somebody believes. Hey, Jacob, you might be a Muslim for all I know. You're not, but let's say that you were, right? Who would I be to tell you that your way is wrong? Yep. No, you're right. I could present facts. I could present personal anecdotes. I could present opinions. I could tell you all day long, one way or the other, what I believe and why I believe it. But for me to keep you at an arm's length or push you away because simply... I don't think that your theology is correct or your political leanings are correct. I'm not going to do that. But if you present yourself in an, in a negative way to where there is a total lack of integrity and morality. Oh yeah. You're gone, baby. You're gone. (sighs) Feel better to get all that off your chest. I need therapy. (laughs) (laughs) This, this is your session right here. Well, that's why we do this is because somebody might learn something from this. I mean, my God, I I think I probably learned a little bit about myself today. I don't know. You're, it just upsets me. I was going, while you're talking, I was going over, like, she turned down awards that was supposed to be for real scientists. And it really irked me. That's why I'm staying quiet. Cause like you get money from some of these awards because it's supposed to go towards your research for scientists. Yeah. Like she got Rants an award for fifty thousand dollars that came along with the award. Well, if she's Swedish, chances are she's gonna lose fifty to sixty percent of that on taxes. Let that one sink in for you. Mm-hmm. There's another that that's another mess though. I don't want to get into the taxation of Sweden. <laughs> that that would be just miserable. I don't know. It just upsets me because you know, yeah, people like my wife, she's in that realm now, you know doing research and now she has to compete against a kid like this. Yeah. And it's not direct competition. It's indirect, but, but the, still, the, yeah. the, the, but the concept applies. The concept is legitimate. You have somebody who's legitimately trying to do real research that actually helps to better the world. And then the United Nations says, Hey, let's listen to this kid right here, but she's got some really good points. She seems smart. <laughs> yeah. I love the voice, by the way. Well, thanks. <laughs> All right, folks. I think I need to go ahead and take a deep breath and a cold shower. Or a hot shower. Or just bust. Maybe some push ups will help. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do some freaking push ups and get this aggression. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time. Yep next time hey in in un un united nations hey hi you suck